Welcome to Film Mirage, the miracle of films. In today's video, we have an interview with the actors and actresses behind Sons and Lovers, coming to theaters next December the 5th and later on Netflix. Buckle up, because we're just starting! I'm Jonathan Hart, and I play poor guy Walter Morel on Sons and Lovers, available next December the 5th. It's a pleasure to be here for you. Hey, I didn't kidding here. Just want to emphasize that for this movie, I was William, the model's older brother. So, yeah, I'm ready for the questions now. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hansen, and I play Gertrude Morel from the new movie Lovers and Sons, only on Netflix. Hi there, uh, my name is Daniel Byers, and nice to meet you all. Uh, let me tell you that I play the role of Paul Morel in the new amazing movie Sons and Lovers. And let me also tell you that uh, it'll soon be available only on Netflix. Hello everyone, my name is Adra Kerlinsen and I am interpreting Miran Lavers in this amazing movie called Sons and Lovers based on the book of D.H. Lawrence. What can you tell us about the filming? It was my first performance as an actress in a production of this level, so I was scared to death when I first arrived on the set. Seeing so many famous actors and actresses such as Adara Carlinson, Oren King, Jonathan Hart and Daniel Bayers, you know, renowned for their best selling movies and I couldn't believe that I, a novice actress whose legs trembled like a jelly on the first shoot, was among them. I I made so many mistakes that day and believe me, it paid me so much to remember them. Despite that, they treat me so well. And not only that, but they helped me a lot with their professional guidance, so I am grateful with them. As you all should know, I have been very busy this year. I finished the filming of The White Tail Dragon in January, I think. And during the filming of this movie, I was also doing some uh, research for a movie I cannot mention because of <laughs> my contract, Disney. Um, the thing is, I had to be switching from one set to uh, another, and that was a little tiring, but you know, that's our business. All of that running apart, um, being on the set was somehow funny. We have some stars in the cast. Um, Mrs. Carlinson is very passionate, inside and out of character. King and Byers turn out to be very professional. But the one I wanted to work with was Elizabeth Hessen, as I myself am a big fan of her work in Broadway. She might have uh, stumbled and forgotten a few lines because of the camera nerves, everybody goes through that. Um, but she cut over it very quickly, very surprising for an actress her age, actually. Um, she keeps saying that she is debuting as an actress, but uh, that is only in front of a camera. Well, um, because she truly has some experience on stage, I can tell. Um, uh, about the filming, well, first of all, I have to say that uh, this was my second time acting in a movie. This time uh, I feel more excited than the first one because uh, the first time I performance in a movie because uh, this one it will be watched by almost all the people around the world and uh, in my first performance the movie was only broadcast on national television uh, and although it was a good filming uh, it was not that exciting. Uh, as this filming of Sons and Lovers. Likewise, even though we filmed uh, so, so many hours a day, I really, I really liked and enjoyed uh, the filming because, thanks God, uh, we all got along with one another and it, not only, it was not only uh, a good, good to film uh, the movie, but it was also funny because everybody made jokes 
and I really enjoyed the filming and working with all the team. It is definitely an unbelievable uh, experience. For me, it was not difficult to work with anyone because since I consider myself an outgoing and friendly person, uh, I got along with everybody. Uh, on the other hand, talking about the clothes that I wore the filming uh, the movie, at the beginning I felt a little bit uncomfortable because since the story is in the 19th century, we, all the characters, had to wear formal clothes. Uh, but in the end, I got used to wearing it. Well, being honest, since this movie was my second one being part of the main cast, because I have filmed some others, such as The Orient Express, Who is the Girl with Tattoos, among others, but as an extra. I can say that it was kind of interesting for me to, to film this movie. Besides that, uh, we had like a difficult time when filming it since COVID-19 pandemic started. We had to be really careful with that and I got COVID-19 and when I discovered it, the team continued to film with others. So when I was in quarantine, I spent most of the time in front of the mirror rehearsing the scenes. Uh, finally. When I was in the studio, I had to catch up, right? Um, it was kind of difficult since most of them have already filmed most of the scenes. Um, and talking about the environment with actors, I think that it was such an, an amazing experience. I learned a lot from them. Since most of us are around the same age, we get along very, very well. A fun experience that uh, happened on the set was when the director, Joseph Pat, uh, told us that certain day he was going to start with uh, Jonathan's scenes but as is usual for Jonathan, he is always late with the typical phrase of I am never late, all others come forward <laughs> then Joseph was already very angry to save Jonathan, I told him that he was in the hospital and that is why he was late the problem here Uh, was that out of nowhere Jonathan appeared talking, walking and greeting people as nothing has happened and I was like Joseph asked him uh, how he had been in the hospital and Jonathan told him that he had even passed near the hospital so at that moment I almost shot an eye at Jonathan for him to see me And I think he understood and quickly began to make up an excuse. It was a little bit funny because in the end, I'm sure Joseph didn't believe us at all. <laughs> Sometimes I even felt uh, like I had known them for a long time. To be honest, this was an incredible experience because of the people. Well, to be honest, I always liked some characters when reading a good book. I liked them to the point of wanting to perform them. That's why I performed William at first, since it was the only character I liked throughout the story. Also, I love to meet and interact with other actors and actresses. I guess that by filming a movie, your life will never be boring. And also, your conversations and daily routines are interrupted by some kind of conflict or chaos that you have since you want to be better every time, every single day, and on every scene also. Um, mundane details like doing the dishes or napping will be replaced by confrontations, act as heroism, and possibly um, dramatic chase scenes, possibly on a horseback. However, filming this movie was not a fairy tale. We were under the complete control of the author, Authors can be a little sadistic sometimes. I know that they just want the film to be performed and recorded in a proper way, but the kind of trauma that you could go through on the way to a happy ending might not be worth it. And furthermore, something that I couldn't help throughout the story, throughout the movie, were those old times. Let's be honest, the closet times we're living in right now cannot be replaced by those old and hard times people had a hundred years ago. There were no TV, no cell phones, 
or even internet. Your social circle was limited by the time itself. You were conditioned just to a uh, pair of friends, your family, your neighbors. That was it. Um, I guess that living a hundred years ago was way more boring, exhausting, and hard than we do today. I was about to go crazy by living in the past every single day for more than four hours, five hours while filming. That was insane. It was not a fairy tale, believe me. We all know that sons and lovers takes place like a hundred years ago, more or less, right? Um, I love playing roles situated in the past. You may call me nostalgic, but I think there's something very um, special about those times. And that is one reason why I enjoy making this film. Filling in 1913 is something amazing and just my grandpa could have told me anything about it before. Um, the production made such a great work on the set. The furniture, the floor, the building, the painting, all of that looks old. Well, oh wait, no, um, not old, that sounds bad, um, ancient. ancient. It feels ancient and beautiful. Those were simpler times, maybe not as comfortable, well, not as comfortable as the ones we're having today, but it is still something you should experience once in your life. Um, a time in which you only had two things to do, uh, working and all find lovers, settle down and have children. No TV at all, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, as most of you will notice, Sons and Lovers was filmed on location in Nottingham, England, and at Bright Studios, it was a new place for some of us. Well, at least it was for me since I am not from England. And I had to move to England for a while and it was difficult for me because I was not used to the place, but my colleague uh, did everything different, right? You know, according to the period in which the film is based, if I am not mistaken, between 1880 and 1890, we were concealing in the crew's clothing. In my case, it consisted of a simple skirt and a shirt waist or a blouse with long sleeves. The way you dress up reflects your social status and in the case of the murals, they couldn't afford fancy clothing because of their economic conditions. But when the Morel children started to earn money at their jobs, they slowly pulled their mother out of the poverty that their father cast her into with all his playing and drinking. So for one, from one moment to another, you will see us in pretty clothes. Well, if you can call that pretty, at least I guess it was pretty for that time, but the point is that the only person who doesn't participate in this makeover is Walter and his minor clothing that symbolizes his failure to improve himself as a man. Are you and your character alike? <laughs> that guy? No, 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 please, no, no, of course not. Uh, do you really think that this face has been undressed? Well, in my defense, I was young and a successful actor, a typical teenager in Hollywood, and uh, it was like 1 plus 1 equals 2, I can tell you, but I'm not that guy on the film, because that is a real problem that he has. Um, Coming late at night, drunk, and just to make everyone's life difficult? <laughs> Only Walter Morel could do that in this story. Um, besides, he was a real idiot. You know what? If, if you get married, which brings a whole list of implications um, and work from before, and you marry a beautiful woman just like Patriot, who does really love you, why would you let her love that? Yes, you work all day on a horrible mind, and yeah, that's tiring, but hey, why did you get married in the first place? That is just being an idiot, and not appreciating what you have in case 
do have the best ending. Because if not, huh, well, you cause all the troubles in this world. Okay, um, if I can describe my character, I will say that William was an intelligent and decisive man who took advantage of every situation that came to his life. Even though William was a spoiled kid, um, he never gave himself up against um, what he wanted to achieve. In fact, William was the model's first enneagram who took a successful decision towards his life because um, he decided to go to a different city to start his life from there. Um, even though William was not raised with plenty of resources, um, he achieved something that none of the models would have achieved and would have never achieved. He got a strong enough will to leave his family behind despite his relationship with his mother. Although William did not receive a happy ending, he could fulfill his and his mother's expectations. I really like to perform this character since it was a role that never went against my life philosophy. I feel identified with the character and I really like to perform it. I guess that William is probably um, the only character in this story that will be able to overcome the model's problem. Um, a character comparison. Uh, I think that Paul, Morel and I are similar and different in some aspects. Uh, for example, on one hand, Paul Morel is a serious, sensitive and fragile person. And on the other hand, I, Daniel Byers, am not a serious person, but I am sometimes sensitive and fragile. Uh, besides, according to Mistress Morel, who is Paul's mom, uh, Paul Morel is prone to fits of depression, and in my case, I think that I don't tend to fits of depression. Uh, but there are some things that make me feel a little bit bad. Uh, Paul also loves to be outdoors in nature and uh, feels a sensuous uh, connection to the natural world. And, uh, and I love that too, and even though I almost never go uh, to some places where I can go and appreciate the nature. Uh, every time I go to one of them, I always try to, I always try to take advantage of the time there. Uh, moreover, there is a difference between him and I, and me, and it is that we both feel uncomfortable about sex and are as deeply ashamed of our desires. I don't relate to Gertrude Morel, beginning with the fact that I am 21 and she is a lady around 40s and 50s. You may be wondering how someone so young like me can play a character with such an age difference. Um, makeup, my dear friends, <laughs> the answer is makeup. All joking aside, Gertrude is a reserved and religious woman who was born into a middle-class family, but her status changed in the moment she met with Walter Murrell. Mrs. Murrell strives to make the best of her poverty and is proud and ready to defend herself when her husband mistreats her. She never lets herself be put down by his temper, which is something admirable, if I may say so. Although her husband makes her fiercely angry throughout their marriage, she tends to dominate and outshine him, for she is really the stronger of the pair. Mrs. Morel loves her children deeply and is generally well-meaning towards them, but the strength of her love for her sons leads her to become jealous and possessive and she inadvertently restricts them as they try to develop their own lives and that is one thing that I believe I differ from their truth I know that I don't have children yet but I understand how vulnerable it's to let children have the freedom to develop their independence overall I will say that Gertrude Murrell is an intelligent 
organized and industrious woman whose only concern is the well-being of her family. We definitely are different, but I can say that Miriam and I have few things in common. On one hand, Miriam is a deeply self-conscious and a spiritual girl. She's extremely religious and loves to feel pure, and she's afraid of physical sensation and experience. Uh, her emotions tend to be extreme and close to the surface. Besides that, uh, she has trouble making light of situations and being friendly and familiar with people. On the other hand, I am not religious, I don't even go to any kind of church, right? But I believe in God for sure. We can say that I am not afraid of physical sensation, but I am not that kind of person who likes to be a stick to others. I can say that I one thing that we have in common is that we have troubles about being friendly and familiar with others because I am not friendly even though some friends always tell me that I am really friendly but definitely I am not I am always with this arse face everywhere so basically we can say that we don't have like a lot of things in common but we can have few things in common What do you expect from the premiere? Um, the expectations, uh, um, let me think. Uh, the main thing uh, I expect from the premiere of this movie is that I hope that a lot of people can go to watching and of course they can enjoy it because my co-workers and I did our best in this movie and I am pretty sure uh, that all people will love it and those whose favorite uh, kind of movies are movies from past centuries will love it more than anything. I think that this movie will mark every single watcher as it has a lot of uncommon situations for um, an average person. I mean, who in earth would have a romantic relationship with his mother as Paul and William did? I know that um, it is not impossible having this complex when kid, but I certainly doubt that a grown-up person is going through this romantic situation or this psychological matter with his mother. Um, that's why I think this movie will be interesting for those who barely know about these psychological complexes. I have very high expectations in Sons and Lovers since I consider that all my colleagues and I film the scenes by heart, right? So I hope that it, it is appreciated and evaluated by the public and by the critics. <laughs> this movie has been such a ride in terms of its project. It will be on streaming on Netflix, but uh, will also premiere uh, in theaters at day before. You can imagine that. Um, we are all waiting for what does exactly happen. I hope we have made our job well and caught the attention of our audience. Um, I want to see you guys on the theaters next uh, December the 5th. I have high expectation about this movie. We are very close to the release date, so I hope many people will see it. Why should people watch this movie? Why should people go to watch this movie? Um, well, the only thing I know is that people must watch this movie because they have to see uh, and appreciate this handsome boy. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, being honest, uh, people should watch this movie because the story is a, 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 is a little bit different from the others. Among the themes uh, the book contains, because this movie was based on the book written by uh, Dr. H. Lawrence. Uh, let's say it's a love story, but uh, it is not the common uh, love story that most writers write about. It will, be definitely, it will definitely catch people's attention. Uh, furthermore, the actors and the actresses of this movie uh, are professionals, are all professionals, 
And believe me, they all made this movie uh, more interesting and striking. Let me tell you that this movie is based on customs from too many years ago, but there are probably still some families that have uh, the same customs, right? I think this incredible movie is about very real issues. For example, machism. I think it will be very interesting since it is a very popular topic nowadays. In the movie, we can see that most of, of the men were always under the influence of their mothers and the family relationship they had seems to be more of a loving relationship. For this interesting topic and many more, <laughs> you have to watch Sons and Lovers very soon only on Netflix. If we take into account that there is an excellent cast with some actors like Jonathan Cast and Orion Kim, and also a topic that have never been explored before, you all cannot miss this film. Have you ever heard about the Oedipus Complex before? Freud attributed the Oedipus Complex to children from 3 to 5. And Sons and Lovers, the novel we were performing during this movie, was or is about this topic. And it was a bestseller in its time. Even though it was censored when published, nowadays we can even show explicit scenes among the characters, scenes that were not even written in the original copy. I promise you all that this movie will leave a thought that without watching it, you probably would never be able to conceive. Well, you understand that I can't obligate anybody to watch anything, but I think people should really watch this film. Seriously, guys, go watch it. Um, first, it is a story that all of us know from before. Sons and Lovers by David Herbert Lawrence is, in my opinion, a classic for love stories in the first half of the 20th century. There is uh, something about the characters that bring them so into life. Uh, you love them, you hate them, you like to kick those as a couple of times, but uh, you also might like to have a beer with them, or some tea if you prefer. Uh, our director, Joseph Bad, had this vision of bringing everything from the book to the film to make it like 10 times more appealing to the eye. Everybody should go watch it. And on the road, read the book as well. It's a story seen with the eyes of present. It is very recommendable. Well, it's a movie that deals with an important topic which few things are told about it. The relationship between fathers and mothers has too much influence on adulthood. A great number of men depend on their mothers for almost everything and no one says anything about it in the media industry. Although there is an obvious small difference between the customs of the time and the current times, there may be people who identify with the main characters, whether they have lived through it or they have been seeing other people in the same conditions. And for all those who like realistic cinema, this movie is for you. What is Sons and Lovers about? What is Sons and Lovers about? Uh, well, the book tells the story of a man so emotionally connected to and influenced by his mother that he is unable to form lasting relationships when he encounters uh, other women. Besides that, uh, Sons and Lovers is a story in which psychology could be one of the main themes of the story because Many conflicts uh, in Sons and Lovers are driven by underlying uh, psychological forces. Sons and Lovers is a story in which one of the main themes I consider is love. Because of the love that the mother has for her sons, uh, they began to see her in a different way. Moreover, her sons were always under the influence of the mother to the point that both began to see themselves as if they were in a love relationship, leaving aside the morbid, right? But I think it is part of another theme. 
Well, 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 what a question. In case you didn't attend Literature 101, Sons and Lovers is a story about the Oedipus complex inside of the moral family. <laughs> well, well not, not really. Not really. Well, yes, really. Uh, it is complicated, okay? It's the story of the moral family and how they go through a lot of drama related to love. Um, there's betrayal, frustration, uh, wrath, hate, indecision, even some sort of infidelity. I'm not sure, they, they were like in a certain grey area at the moment, so I, it, is, it is difficult to tell. But I would say that the whole plot of the story is caused by the Oedipus complex between her two and her kids. Um, she tried to see what she wanted from her husband, well, me, in, the, in their kids, and that affected them and caused a mutual dependence and influence that, if you ask me, was far from being healthy. There can be no argument that Sons and Lovers is a study about the human relationships. Miss Model, because of her turbulent and odd relationship with her husband, and stopped developing deep emotional feelings for her two sons. Paul is the receiver of most of his mother's deep emotional feelings and has with her a bond tighter than normal. Because of this, Paul has troubles handling and being comfortable with his own relationships. All his relationships were plagued by his mother's disapproval. If it wasn't for his mother's selfishness, Paul would have lived happily. Um, it's about mommy and daddy issues and overprotection. From where I stand, I consider that Mrs. Murrow focuses the frustration of the things she could not live with her husband towards her children, William, Annie, Paul and Arthur. She was overprotecting her children, especially Paul, and at the end he was not able to make decisions of his own. I will say that one side effect of overprotective parenting is the constant need of approval. And if you don't have that approval, you may feel anxious, frustrated, and dissatisfied. That is how Paul felt when her mother didn't bless his relationship, neither with Miriam nor Clara. Watch out for spoilers! How about the plot of the movie? Gertrude met a uh, young miner, Mr. Model, at a dance party. Although Gertrude had a religious temperament, she was attracted to Mr. Model's nature and she thought he was very handsome when she saw him dance at the party. The pair got married a few months later and soon Miss Model became pregnant. The, few, the first few months of their marriage were happy but Miss Model discovered that she that they had little in common. Also, she discovered that Mr. Model was not as wealthy as she thought, and that he didn't even own the house they lived in. She disliked living in the mining community, and she didn't get along with the other women. Miss Model gave birth to a son, who she named William, and she adored him greatly. Although she and Mr. Model were still friendly with each other, but she lost any interest in him uh, at all. So she focused all her love in his her son and delights in planning for his future and watching him growing up. Miss Model got pregnant with a second child and with a third one, who she named Paul. Paul grew in a serious and thoughtful child, while William was very active and charming. When William was old enough, he got a job as a clerk and was very successful at it. This way, William got a job at London and that he gleefully accepted, leaving his family behind to go to London and start his life from there. Then, after William leaves to England, she feels so empty 
that she didn't even notice the rest of uh, her kids. She's been left behind with only Annie and Paul. Sorry for lips to the world. Well, um, then there's a little part on the plot in which William, uh, her favorite son, is in Louisa Western in London. Uh, he brings her home a couple of times, and there are some conflicts between Louisa and Annie that don't seem to solve or have a good future. Um, William gets engaged and keeps the same routine, but then he leaves Louisa. Uh, I think that it was because of some influence from um, from his mother. And that is just a bit of the story. Uh, well, but um, then a tragedy comes, and without any announcement, uh, William dies, leaving her tree broken with the loss of her favorite child. And that is like uh, before and after of the story. After William's death, Gertrude becomes shut up until one day when Paul falls ill with pneumonia. She almost loses him as well, but he somehow pulls through and Mrs. Worrell's life now rooted itself in Paul. Many things start to happen among them. Paul begins a close friendship with Miriam Livers. The feelings between them begin to grow, but at the same time they realize that both come from different families and backgrounds and this confuses them so much that they don't know what they really feel for each other. Um, while all this was going on, Paul's brother Arthur joined the army and Gertrude began to have health problems. At the end, Paul decides that he loves his mother more and he wants to be with her instead of formalizing his relationship with Miriam. Since Arthur and Annie are getting married, his mom will be alone, so Paul considers staying with her mom as his duty, and this leads him to distance himself from Miriam, and later on he will look for love in another person he knew beforehand. And the name of this person is Clara Dash. Paul meets Clara through Miriam, and one day he sent to deliver a, me a message to Clara on Paul's birthday, Clara tells Paul that she is aware of the secret that the girls have been up to without her, and she later sends Paul a volume of verses. Paul believes that if he ever marries, he will be with Mary. He can only be friends with Clara since she is still married. Some time passes and Miriam surrenders to Paul, but he worries that she will not find sex between them pleasant, so his love for Clara begins to grow. After that, Mr. Morrell stays with Annie in Sheffield for a week and Paul visits her. Mr. Morrell is ill in bed and reveals that she has a tumor on her side. She has been suffering for months, although she never complained to Paul. Paul goes to the doctor and the doctor agrees to see Mr. Morrell the next day. Finally, he diagnoses it as probably a tumor and says that an operation will be impossible. Uh, Mistress Morel gets sicker and Paul and Annie think that their mother will not survive uh, to the tumor she has on her side. So they decide to give her an overdose of morphia to speed up her death. Paul puts the overdose in her milk. Her truth uh, sleeps heavily uh, through the night and sadly dies in the morning. Paul informs his father about the death. Then, Paul looks at her uh, dead body at night. It seems joyful to him. He kisses her lips and strokes her hair. But sadly, he knows that she will never return. Mr. Morel avoids looking at his dead wife's body. They have a funeral. 
Uh, on the other hand, Paul's relationship with Clara remains distanced. Paul and Clara are going to meet, but he begs Doss to take her back, which he does. Uh, Paul and Morel realize that they cannot live together in the house, so uh, Paul moves to Nottingham and Morel lives with another family in Bestwood. One day, Paul sees Miriam uh, at the church and she goes home with him to eat supper. She suggests they get married, but he doesn't want to. Then he gives her some flowers and takes her to her cousin's house. At the end, Paul, uh, feeling so lost, wonders where he will go next. Uh, he, ca he calls out to her mother, to his mother, longing to touch her. He resolves not to uh, give in to the darkness and he walks resolutely back to town. I'd invite all of you to watch the movie adaptation from the book Sunset's Lover this coming December the 5th. So after all of this guys, I uh, would like to invite you to go and watch Sons and Lovers available next December the 5th on, on all series that you can imagine. Um, or maybe you might watch it later on Netflix, I would also like to say that. But the thing is, I hope that you all enjoy it. Go watch Sons and Lovers on its premiere this coming December the 5th. See you in the theaters to witness the film Mirage. Say, okay, life's a fact. People do fall in love. People do belong to each other. Because that's the only chance anybody's got for real happiness. For real happiness. For real happiness. Because that's the only chance anybody's got for real happiness.